welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. When last we left our intrepid heroes, they were on the way on the first leg of their trip to Duna. And if we zoom out the view here, we can see that up ahead, 46 days from now, they have an encounter with Duna. They are on the way. And now, we need to return to Kerbin and deal with matters here. There are two Heavy Lander Mark I ships in orbit, formerly attached to the ship, to the uh, Discovery. And they're going to be following Discovery. Well, at least one of them is. Possibly both, I'm not sure yet. But uh, in order for that to happen, they need launch vehicles because these are only landers. They're not equipped to make that kind of a long trip themselves. So we'll head down to the Space Center and I do believe, actually, let's stop in the vehicle assembly building and just check things out real quick. And we'll load up the D drive module. Okay, actually, this looks like it should be sufficient for the job. I mean, seriously, if this thing can move the bulk of the station discovery to Duna, then I think it has no problem moving one of the heavy landers out there. So, let's head to the launch pad. And we'll proceed. And we have Sheptop Kerman and Chattigan Kerman piloting this mission. Determined looks on their faces. We'll see if it stays that way after liftoff. And let's go. staging. business. Not too thrilled about that. Let's see if I can't roll this thing out level again.
pitch over. This is climbing nicely. Up to about 90 kilometers and cut the engine. Cut engines straight. <laughs> on 90 degree line and just go for it. Just move to throttle up again. Just 
do that several times. And we'll raise the periapsis without raising the apoapsis too much. it would have helped had I taken two seconds. And oriented prograde. set as target. Alright, how's our plane alignment? Off by 0.7. thinking a lot about the uh, general mission here and I think that I want to do more than just put a space station around Duna or send landers to Eve because that's all well and good there's nothing wrong with that but I think I'd like to do more than Basically what I'd like to do is not just land on these places, but colonize. Start with Duna, then Eve, and of course the moon in Minmus. But also to go further out and include a colony on Drez the moons of Jewel, and even distant Elu, and scorching Moho. I think that would be a pretty good goal. To get the entire, to get a colony of some kind established on every body in the solar system. I'm thinking very seriously about doing that, and this would involve, I think by necessity, a few mods. For one thing, the Keysane pack to approximate the uh, resource mining and such like that will be coming in 0.19. 
consider it practice run. And uh, of course, the ISA maps that for locating key thing deposits and generally mapping planets. particularly have a great interest in very much use of mods. Okay. Let's go ahead and orbit around and see if we've got an idea of how long that's going to take to close in the current situation without changing the orbit anymore. So anyway, oh, that's gonna take a while. So any, because we got it's got this marker has to come all the way around the planet to here. That's going to take a little while, which doesn't bother me, and it won't bother you because I'll cut 99.9% .9 of that out. But anyway. The point is, I had a question. I want some input from viewers. What do you think? Should I go ahead and attempt this colonization procedure with either with stock parts, just staying 100% stock and considering a colony to be two or more landers parked within a kilometer of each other on a planet? Or should I go ahead and install a few mods and include mining and processing keythane and some of these Bobcat Industries parts to make colonizing and such like easier or perhaps a little bit more realistic or maybe even 0.19-ish. Let me know what you think in the comments. I certainly will be interested to hear it. Meanwhile, I'll cut back in when we're approaching our target. All right, we're coming up on intersection here with uh, the D drive and the lander Mark I. Uh, the intersection is going to be about 10 kilometers apart, so it's time to get ready. Here's our target out there, 12 kilometers out. So, let's get this thing... Okay, we're in target mode. Swing around here and get the retrograde velocity vector locked in. And by the way, in the meantime, between the last clip and this one, I have taken the liberty of uh, adjusting the sound settings in KSP so that the music volume is now at 5% down from the 15% it was at I believe and maybe now it won't be drowning me out I certainly hope not
marker. Our fine controls on. And let's go ahead and kill the relative velocity. Adjust a little bit to get back on the marker. Still moving away from us, but not nearly as fast. And now we'll just line up with the target prograde and accelerate towards it. switch to docking mode and the chase camera. Okay. A little bit of thrust direction to bring this yellow marker up centered on the pink marker. Just basically rinse and repeat. Keep this marker centered on that one as we continue to approach the station. And I'll come back in when we're in close approach. All right, we are now approaching 200 meters from the target. Definitely close approach. And just very soon should be able to. Uh, select our docking port as a target once we get to about, I believe it's about 30 meters. Start slowing down a little bit here, down to one meter per second. As we get closer, don't want to approach too fast. I do need to do one thing though. I need to modify this design and put some lights around this end so that I can use them to perhaps have a chance of seeing what I'm trying to dock to. So I'll be making that design change before I launch another one of these. Which will be in the next episode. Hundred and ten meters away now. Closing at one meter per second. Looks like we're coming at the target from above. Still too far out to select the docking port. I can see the rough shape of the ship, but still can't manage to pick out where the docking port is. Which is why I think it would be a really good idea to have lights on this thing. Some good strong lights, 
Maybe I'd be able to see that. Decelerating a little bit more now. We're getting awfully close. For all I know, I'm approaching the tail end of it. In fact, I am approaching the tail end. Alright, let's just kind of jog over to one side a little bit. And get around it. So that I can arrange to face the front end where the docking port is. It's hard to see. Ah, here we are. Clampatron darking port. Set as target. There. Now I can maneuver around this thing. Great marker around with me. Back away a little bit. It's centered docking port. And start moving towards it. it with the thing. Now some forward thrust. This should do it. Kill the SAS. Magnetic clamps engaged, and we are docked. All right. Excellent. And now, now that we're docked, let's take the first step and disable the lander engines. Exit docking mode. Back to staging mode. All right. Make sure that engine is dis is shut down. And 
now. Get a course for Duna plotted for this one. Duna set this target. I'm thinking we'll have a burn right about there. Gives plenty of time to get it figured out. Close approach, 2.6 million meters. That doesn't look like getting any closer. How about this way? I figure like the other ship, there will probably be at least one mid-course correction to fine-tune it. 872,000. Right in here should be pretty close. I found also that by f for fine tuning the adjustments, instead of using retrograde to back to reverse, okay, when you apply a bunch of prograde, pull this handle out that way. And, and when you're trying to fine-tune it to reverse the bret the prograde, instead of applying retrograde, which is really fast, take the prograde and just push it in a little bit. And you get a kind of a fine-tuning. It's not as precise as actually typing in numbers. 199,000 kilometers, all right. 120,000. We have an encounter. 29,000. Can I fine tune that any better? Eight thousand nine hundred. Periapsis forty one thousand kilometers. I think it was better the other way. 10,000 kilometers. Okay, I'm going to leave that well enough. Leave well enough alone. That's enough to get us to an encounter. We can do a mid-course correction somewhere along the way to uh, fine-tune that to make it more precise. All right, now... Let's get this thing turned around. Facing in the right direction. I have a thing about having it heads up, but that's all right. And I know I'm probably facing the wrong way right now, almost exactly, but that's okay. I've got 15 minutes to get in position. one other thing I need to do. Disable the flow on the lander's monoprop. We don't want to be using that. Now let's get this thing flipped around and find our blue node marker. I had it 
controlled from the doggone lander. That's not right. our marker. Just under 15 minutes till burn time. Stabilize, kill the thrusters. And now we'll warp time ahead, 15 minutes to burn time. I expect this is going to be a long burn, so I'm going to stop about 5 minutes before burn, fine tune the position, and then I'm going to go ahead and light the engines at 3 minutes to zero. Just about in position here. Let's fine tune the ship's alignment. And all it takes is a little bit. Warp up to T minus three minutes and light the main engines. stable than the whole station was. And if this thing had, if the other one of these had enough delta V to move the station out there, then this one is not going to have any problem getting that lander out there. Okay, this has got to be another four and a half minutes of burn. I'm going to go ahead and uh, ride this out. Come back in when it's just about done. All right, just about done with the burn here. Making little minor adjustments to the 
heading to keep us on the blue marker. Still have an encounter. Periapsis 30,000 kilometers. Not great, but it's a Duna Periapsis. And this ship will be arriving in, at Duna in 54 days. Assuming we don't make another mid course, make a mid course correction along the way somewhere to bring the Periapsis down, which probably will happen. But that will be next time. And next time, in, in the next episode, I'll be, uh, like I said, I'm going to do a redesign, a, a brief, a slight redesign to put some lights on the forward section of this unit. I'm thinking I might add a little bit more solid boosters or something, because this tank is almost exhausted. It still has plenty of Delta V, because we've got the fuel in these four LTV 400s. So there's still another 1,600 liters of fuel available. Anyway, we now have the station with its two small landers and one heavy lander headed for Duna. And we'll get some more of this going on in the next episode. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you think about the idea of uh, using the Ketane mod and uh, a few of the uh, Bobcat Industries mobs mods to uh, get this planetary colonization thing underway because the goal is definitely colonize every single body in this system that can be landed on in the meantime thanks for watching take it easy i'm out of here